What a Mark. Thanks hey, for coming Benjamin. out. Thanks for having me. So, thanks for responding to my email. Sure. As I mentioned, a mason originally built our house. Okay, well, I can kind of tell. You got this beautiful stone wall over here. As I was walking in, I saw that great stone well. But look at this gem right here. This is great. This is my wife's favorite piece. Uh, she loves roasting marshmallows. Oh, I bet. I, I enjoy making pizzas. Every year, though, the cracks just seem to get a little bit bigger. Okay. We wanted to make sure that this year, before we go to use it, it's going to be safe. Okay, well, just walking up to it, I can see a few things that I would comment about, but why don't we do a full walk, okay. we'll make an assessment, and then some decisions. Sounds great. All right, let's start over here. All right, so right off the bat, Benjamin, look at this joint right here. That's going to need to be carved out, but you can see it comes all the way around this corner. We're going to want to rejoint that, which brings us over here, and you can see that this vertical crack, same situation, we're going to have to carve it out, replace it with fresh mortar. Okay. Now, all right. there's a whole bunch of different materials. Why would they do that? Well, to be honest with you, as a mason, if I have extra material on a job, I'm going to take it back to my house. I'm going to put it to the side. And when I have enough to build something, I'm going to build it. So that that's probably sense. what happened, yeah. He did it in his free time. Yep, but he did a great job. All right, Benjamin, you can see that the damage continues up here. Goes all the way through the whole side. All these cracks we're going to have to cut out just like we do on the other side. Okay. And as we go around this side right here, this is the same damage that we saw between the brick and the stone. So this joint has to come out. We're going to have to repack that. Okay. All right. We have a joint that comes this way yes, sir. on the horizontal. And that'll bring us out front, uh, which things are looking pretty good. We have a couple holes back here. I don't know why they're there, but we're going to fill them in. Okay. There's a crack. We're going to clean that up as well. But what I do like about this oven is that burn pattern. That kind of shows me that everything is burning well, which I like. Okay. Why are those bricks bumped out in there? Actually, that's a great question. All they do is support a cooking rack. This is an oven, okay. right? So you'll slide the cooking rack, rack in. They'll be held on both sides. That's when you're cooking the food. If you want to cool the food, you pull the rack out. You slide it in at the higher elevation. The food will, okay. will cool off a little bit. But outside right here, you can see that there's a lot of work that we need to do here. Very salvageable, but you can notice the joints are cracked. We're going to want to fix those. Okay. Another feature that I'm looking at that I really do like is this drip edge right here. I always wondered what that was. Yep, this is a great feature because when you have snow melt on top or if you have rain, it's obviously going to want to drip down this edge. It's going to hit this and want to drip into the brickwork. Okay. We don't want that, so that's where that drip edge comes into play, and the water just drips off of that line. Awesome. Great feature. Overall, I think everything looks great. The good news is this oven seems to be structurally sound. That's awesome. All we're going to have to do, again, is just cut open these joints, repoint them. Okay. But the culprit here seems to be water infiltration, which is a huge problem up in New England. Because once water infiltrates masonry, it turns to ice, which pushes the masonry all over the place. Okay. Which is going to lead to these repairs. So I just want to make sure where the source of the water is coming from fix that, and then we can do our major repairs. Okay. All right? Right on. Let's go. All right, Benjamin. So here we are at the top of our oven, and as suspected, you see that crack all the way along the front of this? Yes, sir. That same crack goes down this side, it goes down that side, and it's also evident out back. That's our culprit. Okay. Unfortunately, this lighthouse figure, this cap that you have on here, probably has to come down as I looked up from the bottom, I can see that the flue underneath this brick and stucco is just sitting there. It's not mortared down. It's not glued down. Okay. So once the water gets in there and travels through that crack, that's when it gets out and disperses itself. That makes sense. So what we're going to have to do is take this off. I'll replace it with a new flue later. Okay. All right. Let's get Let's to get it. Let's get at it. All right, Benjamin, now it's time for the work. Okay. So we want to start with the brick, because it's easiest. Sometimes the uh, field stone gets a little tough to maneuver this grinder. We might even have to use some hand chisels for it. But the first thing I want to do is I want to cut all these broken joints out with a grinder. So okay. this is a four-inch grinder. 
That's a diamond blade right there, so it'll make short work going through the mortar. Okay. All right, and the most important thing we want to do with this grinder, of course, we want to have all our protection on, but we also want to make sure that this is connected to a HEPA vac. Okay. And the HEPA vac is actually going to capture most of the dust that we are going to produce. So, Makes sense. very important these days. We will grind about three quarters of an inch of the cracked mortar joints. When grinding out brick joints, I will start at the vertical head joints, then move to the horizontal bed joints. All right, Benjamin, so this is a little bit of a different situation. Of course, we have the stone, so we're going to have to deal with the irregularity of that. Okay. The grinder is always our friend, but because of that stone, I think we're going to use a chisel and a hammer. It looks like somebody did this before. Why are we fixing it again? Okay, well, that's, that's the reason we're here. You can see the old mortar, so you can see the new mortar that they put in. What they didn't do before they regrouted everything was they didn't fix the original problem. Okay. So that's what we're going to do. But before that, we're going to take all this old mortar out and start fresh. I'm going to be very careful, but I'm going to give it a light tap, take it away from the stone, which I just did. And now I'm going to smash it. Okay. And that'll get the joint busted up and get me on my way. Right on. We will dry brush the joints to clean off any excess mortar or dust and then go over them with a damp masonry brush. All right, now it's time to fill the joints. Dump that mortar right in this tub. Okay. And what we're using today, Benjamin, is a type N mortar. Okay. It's a strong mortar, but it's going to allow for a little bit of movement in the brick, the stone, and the concrete. Okay, so we don't so, have the same cracks. Right. So why don't you get me some water? Yes, sir. Pour it right into that center. Now, just a little at a time. We're going to want to add the water slowly because we can't take it out. Makes sense. I'll know when I'm done when I get an oatmeal-ish consistency. Okay. Uh, that, that's going to give me some workability. It's going to let us push the mortar deeply into the joints. Okay. All right. I'll take a little more from you, Benjamin. Yes, sir. Say when. Yep. That's great right there. People tend to over pour the water because it's easier to mix. They don't really know they're doing it, but they're not feeling so much resistance. You got to fight that. Okay, I think we're ready. I got that oatmeal-ish consistency that I like. Back myself some water. First thing I'm gonna do, Benjamin, is I'm gonna go for the head joints. Okay. I'm gonna make those flush, and then as I do the, my horizontal joints, the heads will already be filled in, so I'm just gonna have to tap them just to make sure they look good. Okay. What you're going to use out back is this hawk. Okay. okay. You're going to line it up with all those stone joints. You're going to take margin trowels of different sizes because we have such variation in those joints. Okay. So some joints are going to be that fat. Some joints are going to be this fat. And you may even use something this thin because you're going to want to push the mortar all the way back into the stone. Okay. We have some pretty big gaps back there. So what you want to do is just make sure everything's full. As you bring the mortar out to the face of the stone, you're going to leave it. We'll come back and we're going to mimic the joints that someone else has already done. Okay. All right, just to keep everything consistent. Mark, how are we going to handle this joint? All right, so this is one of the reasons that I gave you all those different joiners and margin trowels. Okay. Wider joint, it varies all the way up. 
Uh, you can see the pockets in there. Yep. We can't leave those empty. Okay. So I want you to start at the bottom. I want you to pack that solid. That way you'll have a base to build off of. Okay. And as you go higher and higher on this joint, just take one of those smaller trowels and just start punching that mortar as deep as it'll go. And flush out with the stone. Okay. Benjamin will go over the wet mortar in the fieldstone joints with a damp sponge in order to match the previous finish. To cap off the day, I'm installing a new 12 inch by 12 inch clay flue by countersinking it into its original flue's position, securing it with type N mortar. This will prevent water from infiltrating the oven. All right, Benjamin. All set, flues in, we're cleaned up, what do you think? I think it looks great, the repairs are awesome. I'm happy as heck, you know, not everything's a tear down. We fixed the leak so you shouldn't have any more problems. I know already that I'm gonna be happy with the color of the mortar. Uh, give me some time and I'm sure that's gonna match. But other than that, the only thing I gotta tell you, no marshmallows, no pizza for 28 days. You gotta let the mortar cure, but after that, cook away. Awesome. Thank you so much, sir. All right, Benjamin. Thank you very much. See ya. Thanks for watching. This old house has got a video for just about every home improvement project, so be sure to check out the others. And if you like what you see, click on the subscribe button to make sure that you get our newest videos right in your feed.